we're already pretty embedded um, very much as representing all the different sectors, working with all our different partners. Uh, on a number of policy fronts, uh, we've been uh, working on uh, creative and cultural education, which has been deprioritized by um, the UK government on finance, trying to ensure better arts funding, on increasing diversity and access, all that kind of thing. All of that was hard work enough, and that's before the train crash of um, Brexit came along. And the last two months have been absolutely astronomical. 96% uh, of our members voted to remain in the EU. Um, and ever since then, we have been pretty much in daily contact with government. And it's a government that's really coming to us and, and to others and to say, can you help us out of this predicament? Well, at the moment, it's much more of a sort of emergency ward situation of reassurance, trying to make sure that, uh, I mean, so many, well, so many across all uh, facets of British life people, organizations uh, have employees from the top to the bottom who are EU nationals. So there's been a huge element of reassuring, making sure that nothing seismic will happen, at least not in the next two, two and a half years. That's the first bit. The next bit is to make sure that out of this trauma and out of what we uh, strongly believe to have been a terribly mistaken decision, that something can come out of it. And that will be, at the very least, um, access to the single market, uh, free movement of talent, or at least not making it too difficult. Because after all, it's economically illiterate to close this country off. We are um, fabulously international, global. Just look at Beyond Borders and what it's trying to achieve, the people it attracts. Look at the Edinburgh International Festival, all the different festivals. Everywhere in Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, um, they are very, very open nations. The whole British vibe is incredibly uh, open. And to in any way restrict that is culturally disastrous, societally disastrous and economically cataclysmic. Creative Industries has been over the last 10 years growing at an average of 7, 8, 9, 10% a year. Employment growth is more than 5%. So you're just getting more and more people bailing in just as other uh, people are bailing out of other sectors. It's a huge employer of young people, the whole mix between uh, creative economy and tech, the whole um, creative digital side of things is huge. Our film, our music, our fashion, our TV, our books are globally renowned. Whenever you go, wherever you go around the world, um, whether you are a creative yourself, whether you're a business uh, leader, whether you're a politician, the first thing people ask you, whether you're in India or China or Brazil or the US or whatever, is something to do with the UK creative industries. It might be the latest Bond movie, it might be the, the, the show at the Tate, it might be the Harry Potter uh, novel or play. That is what sells Britain and that is what uh, binds Britain together. And it's also at the heart of the regeneration of our cities. Look at what's happened at Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow, Edinburgh. These are cities that are heavily reliant on, on the creative industries, not just for the economy, but for the vibe and the optimism as well. Whatever we feel about the decisions made by uh, the, the outgoing government, the incoming government, and all the various political parties, and the, and the sort of um, real sense of anger that so many people feel about what happened over the last four or five months, we have to work very, very strongly with them. We have to work with civic leaders. We're working very closely with the Scottish government. Um, we have an absolute responsibility, not just for the sector. This isn't just a sort of internally looking thing. The success of the creative sector has absolute public benefits across the piece um, for uh, the rest of British society. There's all kinds of studies done when you have successful art galleries, theatres, um, film companies, music companies in a particular place, that it has a direct positive benefit on all kinds of social um, uh, phenomena. Crime, antisocial behaviour, public health, mental health, uh, all, all kinds of issues around aspiration it kind of as long as they are inclusive and as long as they work very very hard to make sure that they work very firmly in communities so we've got a huge responsibility but it's all part of a much bigger conversation over the next two and two and two and a half years about if we are going to brexit just what does the next generation mean and we certainly can't let down uh, the younger generation who voted uh, by a far greater majority not to leave the EU.